Okay guys, in this video I will be taking you through how to install the motor temperature sensor on the open source firmware. Now you will need to buy the LM35 sensor. I think I spent about a dollar each on eBay, so have a bit of a look around. They're, they're actually quite tiny. Um, so make yourselves familiar with the wiki. Have a bit of a read about all the steps that are required. Um, you can see how the wiring is on the sensor and you can see how it's wired to the controller. Now I've had a closer look. Um, you can see you can see the controller here needs to come out so that we can get in there. So we take this cover off to pull it out this way, but there is a screw on the opposite side of the controller that will actually let it pull out. So you've got to get to both sides of the motor. Uh, you can still leave it intact on the bike. The motor doesn't have to come off the bike. But just have a look at the uh, the wiring. I will post links to these pictures. And um, for my controller, which doesn't actually have a throttle, we need to connect um, the wire to the throttle wire here. Now for some other connectors, uh, the eight pin connectors, they will already have a throttle installed. The green one is the brake, which we don't need. The red one is the throttle. So this temperature sensor will be using the throttle wire to send the signal. So you won't be able to use the throttle. Now you shouldn't really worry too much about that because the you know once you put this open source firmware on, you really won't need the throttle. The throttle's been, you know, it's a little bit underwhelming on the TSD2 anyway and you're not going to miss it once you put this uh, this firmware on. But, but you know, if you really want your throttle, you won't be able to use the current um, method of, of installing this particular temperature sensor. Um, I think it's a really cool feature. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the controller out. Okay. Okay, now we will be needing to get to this cover here because the uh, controller comes out comes out the other way. So I'm just going to take the crank off. Okay, so I have a long extension bar for that. It makes it a lot easier to try to get this off. And that's just a, a cover there, so again, we'll give that a little bit of a clean. I believe this is the screw that we need to loosen off, but, um, but let's turn the bike around and we'll, we'll start working on the other side. See here, they're you know they're stuck in quite well. So we have freed up um, a bit of room to get these wires through, and it is coming through now. Again, we're not going to be able to fit the the uh, connector here. That's not going to go through the hole. But we should be able to get it up enough to do some glue, uh, some work on it. Now, as you can see here, guys, this is all caked in kind of like a silicon rubber. So we're just going to have to peel away the area where we need to get to. So I'm going to refer back to the wiki and have a look um, where our throttle wire should be. Um, yeah, just. Give me a couple of minutes here. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you the diagrams I'm referring to. So this is the 
this is the six pin controller like mine you can see that's the throttle wire there and there's your 5 volt there now if you have your 8 wire you've already got a throttle connected so that basically goes off your red wire your 5 volt goes off your white wire um, now this is the green which is your brakes not worried about that we just need a negative okay so what I've done is I've exposed that pin there which is the throttle pin and I've exposed this pin here which is right underneath that connector which is the 5 volt really hard to see on the video but um, yeah have a look at the close-up diagrams now I haven't identified an earth but I'm sure there's plenty around so um, so yeah give me a little bit of time so I've got to solder the the signal wire to that, the plus 5 volt to that, and just need to identify an earth. Okay, so I'm just soldering up the, um, the sensor onto the red, white, and black wires as per Casino's diagram above. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is just use the hot glue gun to just put a little bit of glue there so the wires don't fall out. Well, I'm just going to push this back in, see if we can get all that back where it was. Okay, so I'm just going to fill up this gap again with silicon, just in case we do end up underwater. We don't want this, we don't want all the water going inside the motor, do we? Alright, the colour plate goes back on like this, so all these um, get routed through here. Okay. Just put the cover plate back on. Yeah, I'm just looking at how how shiny these the heads are. And I've just noticed the inside of the ring here is also quite shiny. I'm just wondering whether that's actually hitting there. I was going to use like the smallest dot of super glue I could put on this thing. Are you there? Okay now while that's drying I might as well just put these back on. Okay, now I think that's kind of stuck on. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just put some silicone on top of that. It's gone dry, so I'm just going to use this regular stuff. Assuming this will also hold the uh, hold the thing on and okay, so we've just let this dry overnight. It seems to be um, fairly solid. So all I'm going to do is put this back together. I'll just give that 
area, a bit of a wipe. Can't really get under there. And then just give this um, cap a little bit of a wipe as well. Just make sure it's nice and clean. I normally put a little bit of uh, a little bit of rubber grease on the cap just to help preserve the um, just to help preserve the seal and, and make it seal. Okay, so I'm just going to connect up my um, ST link to the uh, sensor control cable and. I'm going to fire up the ST Visual Programmer tool and I've already downloaded the hex files which is the 0.13 version so anything above that will work okay Okay, now for the LCD, I've actually made a little cable that I've soldered into the back of the LCD so I can get to it a little bit easier. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, there's the cable. Not sure how long that actually is, I don't want to pull on it too much, but that should be it. And I've made up another little cable here that um, connects to it. go to menu 5 which is all about the temperature um, we'll go into that okay so menu 0 in item 5 is to turn on the temperature sensing okay now menu 1 is the temperature at which the um, current limiting starts happening so currently it was set to 1 or 0, we've got to set that to 75 degrees C. And then the other one which is menu 2, which is the temperature at which the motor actually cuts out. So we'll put that on 85. Okay, so we'll save that. Long press, long press to get back out. All right. Um. Okay, I've just installed this new temperature sensor, which seems to be working a lot better. It's actually reading 20 degrees instead of 13. And I know that 13 degrees is the reading you get when you have no sensor at all. So um, yeah, 19 degrees, which is pretty cool. What I'm gonna do is um, just sort of try to heat it up a little bit with the hot air gun without going too extreme. So just from this kind of distance and you see if that changes at all oh yes it is going up all right we don't want to overheat it so um yeah it's working cool okay so i've just installed the temperature sensor we are currently at 72 degrees now it gets to about 75 degrees and it will start throttling, throttling back the power. We've just got a little bit of a hill just to get home. I'm nearly home. Stopped pedaling. Oh, I've eased off and it's still it's gone up to about 78. So the problem is there isn't really a, a way of this motor cooling itself down. It's not exposed to air. It is... Uh, surrounded by a casing and it will take some extra time to cool down anyway I just want to show you that it is possible to get to 75 76 degrees without really putting on too much power so I think having this temperature sensor is actually a really good idea